Welcome to Premier Brief. The content of the briefing includes. What just happened? All you need to know about Elise Archer and if Tasmania is going to an early election. Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen announces new cabinet. Letters, it is not Justin Welby's job to meddle in Britain's immigration policy. Jacinta Allen names her new cabinet, including her big build replacement. Pep Guardiola vows to behave after becoming first manager banned from touchline since crackdown. What just happened? All you need to know about Elise Archer and if Tasmania is going to an early election. ABC. The minority government of the Australian state of Tasmania is on the brink of collapse after Elise Archer, the attorney general and top law officer, resigned from the Liberal Party. Archer, who denies bullying claims, sent a message to a staff member saying she was sick of victim survivors. Premier Jeremy Rockliffe has called for Archer's resignation from Parliament, but she has not yet done so. If Archer does resign, there will be a recount in her seat, and the government will face a no-confidence motion if she is not replaced in time. Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen announces new cabinet. ABC. The newly appointed Victorian Premier, Jacinta Allen, has unveiled her cabinet less than a week after taking office. Deputy Premier Ben Carroll has been appointed as the Minister for Education and Medical Research. Tim Pallas will retain his position as Treasurer and Minister for Industrial Relations and will also take on the role of Minister for Economic Growth. Danny Pearson will take over the portfolios of Transport Infrastructure and the Suburban Rail Loop. Vicky Ward will join the Cabinet as the Minister for Prevention of Family Violence and Minister for Employment. Several key portfolios, including planning, police, and health, have remained unchanged. Letters, it is not Justin Welby's job to meddle in Britain's immigration policy. Telegraph. Several readers have written to the Telegraph to criticize the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, for involving himself in politics and advocating for increased immigration. One reader suggests that Welby should focus on addressing the problems within the Church of England, such as the shortage of parish priests. Another reader criticizes Welby for damaging the Church's reputation and alienating regular worshippers. One reader questions why people want to come to Britain instead of other safe countries, and highlights concerns about the strain that increased migration places on limited resources such as the NHS, housing, and education. Jacinta Allen names her new cabinet, including her big build replacement. The Sydney Morning Herald. The new cabinet of Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen has been sworn in, with Danny Pearson taking on the roles of Transport Infrastructure Minister and Minister for the Suburban Rail Loop. Deputy Premier Ben Carroll has been given education and medical research, while former Speaker Colin Brooks will be responsible for creative industries and parts of the government's housing strategy. Other appointments include Gabrielle Williams as Minister for Government Services and Consumer Affairs, Tim Pallas as Treasurer and Minister for Industrial Relations, and Ingrid Stitt as Minister for Mental Health. Pep Guardiola vows to behave after becoming first manager banned from touchline since crackdown. Telegraph. Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola has admitted he needs to improve his behaviour in the technical area after becoming the first manager to be banned under new Premier League rules. Guardiola received a one-match touchline ban after picking up a third yellow card of the season in the Carabao Cup defeat to Newcastle. He has vowed to control his behaviour but cannot guarantee that he will not receive further bans. Guardiola also expressed his frustration with the new rules, stating that he will speak out if he sees something he does not like. Wallace told Sunak to give £2 billion more to Ukraine. Telegraph. Former UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace has called on the government to spend an additional £2.3 billion, $3.2 billion, on military support for Ukraine. Writing in the Telegraph, Wallace said that the UK had been overtaken by Germany as the largest European military donor to Ukraine, adding that the country had a chance to help the conflict with Russia finish. The UK has so far committed £4.6 billion to Ukraine, spending the money on training, ammunition, contributions to Ukrainian defence funds and equipment. Sunak makes motorhomes jibe as he vows to smash SNP. Telegraph. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has mocked the Scottish National Party, SNP, over its legal troubles, claiming that the UK government had provided enough additional funding to Holyrood to pay for 28,000 motorhomes. Speaking at the Conservative conference, Sunak also pledged to defeat the nationalists in the next election. He also criticised Labour leader Keir Starmer, accusing him of caring more about North London than the North Sea. The SNP is currently under investigation for its finances, and party leader Nicola Sturgeon, her husband Peter Morell, and former party treasurer Colin Beattie have been arrested. Qantas chair and Senate tormentor in grand final truce. The Sydney Morning Herald. 
Qantas Airways Chairman Richard Goiter and National Senator Bridget McKenzie put aside their differences during the AFL Grand Final. The two had recently disagreed on the government's decision to reject extra flights from Qatar Airways. Mackenzie and Goiter shook hands and agreed to put their political differences aside to celebrate the AFL's grand final day. Iceland boss Richard Walker quits out of touch Tories. Telegraph. Richard Walker, the boss of supermarket chain Iceland, has left the Conservative Party, criticizing the party for being badly out of touch. Walker, who had been on the approved candidate list for the Conservatives, cited the party's approach to net zero as a reason for his departure. He said that he was never prepared to wear a gag to bag a seat. Walker also criticized the government's handling of major infrastructure projects, such as HS2, and accused the conservatives of losing touch with the needs of business, the environment and everyday people. Referees stood down for Liverpool goal error were working in UAE 48 hours before. Telegraph. The two video assistant referee officials involved in the offside controversy during the Liverpool vs Tottenham Hotspur match had both worked in the United Arab Emirates just two days before their Premier League fixture. Darren England and Dan Cook officiated a match in Sharjah on Thursday before returning to London to prepare for Saturday's game. England has been replaced as the fourth official for a subsequent match and Cook has also been stood down from his next game. The incident has raised questions about whether referees should be travelling long distances shortly before officiating Premier League matches. This conference is a golden chance to reignite conservatism. Telegraph. Jacob Rees-Mogg, former Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, has called for a return to economic conservatism in the UK. In an op-ed, Rees-Mogg criticised the 1960s amoral view that he believes has weakened the family, and called for policies that support family creation and preservation. He also criticised the country's net-zero approach, arguing that it is costly and unrealistic, and called for supply-side reforms, including deregulation, to stimulate economic growth. Rees-Mogg made the comments ahead of the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. Sunak unveils list of 55 overlooked towns receiving £20 million each in 10-year plan. Telegraph. The UK government is set to invest £1 billion, $1.28 billion, into 55 towns, including seven in Scotland and four in Wales, to regenerate high streets and tackle antisocial behaviour. Each town will be given a £20 million endowment-style fund to be spent over 10 years. The funds will be used to improve high streets, transport, visitor numbers and the local economy. The government aims to unlock more private sector investment through a series of measures such as auctioning empty high street shops and reforming licensing rules. NHS leaders warn that strike wave will bring care to near standstill. Telegraph. The NHS will come to a near standstill this week with triple strikes by junior doctors, consultants and radiographers, health service leaders have warned. On Monday, the British Medical Association, BMA, will embark on three days of coordinated walkouts, targeting the week of the Tory party conference for the greatest disruption yet. Hospital leaders say this number may be the tip of the iceberg with trusts avoiding scheduling activity for strike days. Tens of thousands more appointments are expected to be rescheduled this week, on top of almost 130,000 axed in the last week of strikes. From 7 a.m. on Monday until 7 a.m. on Thursday, both junior doctors and consultants will deliver Christmas Day levels of staffing only, meaning hospitals can offer little more than an emergency service. The walkouts are estimated to have cost the NHS more than £1 billion. The government has said the pay award is final, with the average junior doctor getting an 8.8% rise this year, and a 6% rise for consultants. At least 400 square feet. How big should a home be? plus other letters to the editor for October 1st. The Globe and Mail. A retired judge from California has claimed that the ultimate goal of tackling the opioid crisis should be to end addiction, rather than simply providing a safe supply for addicts. Eugene Hyman, who served as a judge in Santa Clara County, argued that supervised consumption and uncontaminated supply programs have not significantly reduced abuse in Canada and the U.S. He called for addicts in the criminal justice system to be required to participate in drug treatment courts, which have demonstrated success in helping people overcome addiction. Another letter writer argued that prevention efforts should be a priority, particularly through education in schools. They claimed that schools should increase their efforts to educate young people on the risks of recreational drug use, with the aim of persuading even one young person to avoid drugs being considered a success. Well, what a whirlwind of news we have today. From political turmoil in Australia to football bans in the UK, there's certainly no shortage of drama. But fear not, my friends, for the sixth doctor is here to break it all down for you.
Let's start with Elise Archer and the potential collapse of the Tasmanian government. It seems Archer's resignation has sent shockwaves through the Liberal Party, with Premier Jeremy Rockliffe calling for her resignation from Parliament. If she does step down, we could see a recount in her seat and a no-confidence motion against the government. It's a political storm in the making, my friends. In other political news, Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen has named her new cabinet. Deputy Premier Ben Carroll has been appointed Minister for Education and Medical Research, while Tim Pallas retains his position as Treasurer and Minister for Industrial Relations. And it seems the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, has found himself in hot water for meddling in politics. Some readers are not happy with his advocacy for increased immigration, suggesting he should focus on addressing issues within the church instead. Oh, the woes of a religious leader in a political world. But let's not forget the world of sports. Pep Guardiola, the Manchester City manager, has been banned from the touchline for his behavior. He vows to improve, but who knows what antics he'll get up to next. And in the world of rugby, we have some interesting revelations about the referees involved in the Liverpool vs Tottenham match. It seems they were jet-setting around the globe just days before the game. Perhaps a bit of jet lag led to that controversial offside decision? Who knows? Now, my dear viewers, it's time for some analysis. It's clear that politics and sports are never short on drama. Whether it's resignations, cabinet reshuffles, or touchline bans, there's always something to keep us entertained. And let's not forget the ongoing debate over immigration and the role of religious leaders in politics. These are complex issues that require careful consideration and respectful dialogue. As for the UK, it seems tax cuts are on the agenda at the Conservative Party conference. Liz Truss and Dame Preeti Patel are calling for a reduction in corporation tax to make the UK more business-friendly. Will this be the key to economic growth and attracting wealthy residents? Only time will tell. Now, my friends, it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you agree with the calls for tax cuts or the criticism of the Archbishop of Canterbury? I'm eager to hear your perspectives, so don't be shy. Let's keep the conversation going. And that's all from me, The Sixth Doctor, for today. Stay tuned for more news and analysis from the wondrous world of Six Degrees. Until next time, my friends. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email.